Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Dean and Andrea, and today we're bringing you a really unique, really cool furniture flip. Yeah, I found this table on Facebook Marketplace for $20, and I had this idea in my head that I felt like it was gonna turn out really cool, and I wanted to see if I could take this old, outdated coffee table and make something really cool and modern with it. And more than just flipping this piece of furniture, we're also gonna do a really cool feature wall in my recording studio. So lots of really cool stuff in this video, and let's go ahead and dive in. This is my studio, and as some of you may know, for the last five years, I've actually run a recording studio as my day job. And today we're gonna be adding a wood-looking feature wall to the main wall of this studio space. We started out by clearing everything off this wall to give ourselves space to work. We even made time for a little guitar lesson. Okay, little guitar student, this is how you play a G chord. <laughs> I can't even tell what you're doing. I want to go on record and state I can use a power drill. Okay, thank you. And a big thanks to Reno Board for sponsoring this project. The first and most important step in this entire process is the prep work. The walls here in the studio don't have any texture, but if you have drywall that has texture on it, you'll want to sand that down smooth first and then either prime or apply a non-oil based paint. If you're applying to a wall that's already smooth like ours, you want to make sure and clean it with a good degreaser such as TSP and a clean cloth to remove any grease or dust that may be on the wall. Once that dries, it's recommended to apply a sample piece for at least 24 hours to ensure it adheres properly. For the feature wall, we're going to be using peel and stick wall tiles by Renovore. The planks are lightweight, incredibly easy to install, and the texture on them gives them a very realistic wood look. Reno Board has several different styles, but for today's wall, we're going to be using the rustic wood planks. So it's 936, we're gonna start this wall, and we're gonna see just how fast we can actually get this done. Theo Dean is making his grand debut today on the studio feature wall, and he's helping. Hey, don't fall on me. <laughs> Nope. To apply the boards, you simply peel off the film, being careful not to touch the adhesive backing, and then lightly position in place and firmly press down when you have it positioned where you want it. And I want to go ahead and add right here that installation for this was incredibly fast and easy. Yeah, so easy in fact that I could do it, and that's saying a lot. We didn't even need any power tools for this project. I simply used a utility knife or a good pair of scissors to cut around the outlets and then cut the ends off the boards. In the end, installation only took us less than yeah. two hours yeah. and we ended up with this beautiful feature wall that totally transformed this space. We love how this wall turned out, and since we finished well before lunch, we had plenty of time to get started on the coffee table. I found this little coffee table on Facebook Marketplace for only $20, and to be honest, the owners were a little bit surprised that I even wanted it because obviously it's in need of a little bit of love. Sometimes I see a picture of an old piece like this and I just have immediate inspiration and know exactly what I want to do with it. For this one, I was picturing a much more modern look with a lighter wood stain and a really cool fluted detail on the legs. Step one was to start sanding down the top with my random orbital sander and since this is veneer on top, I decided to use 150 grit instead of the normal 80 grit that I would use to remove a finish just so I didn't risk going all the way through the veneer. Now, sanding off this old finish was probably the single most time-consuming part of this entire project, but it made such a huge difference.
After the initial round of sanding, I decided to pull off the old bottom detail on the legs but wanted to add back a little bit of height and so I used some scrap 1x2s I had on hand and cut them down and then screwed them into place. For the fluted details on the legs, I will be using this stuff called pole wrap and its intended use is actually to wrap basement poles to give a more decorative finished look, but I have found this to be a really great way to add fluted details to pieces of furniture. After cutting all of the pole wrap that I would need, I attached it using liquid nails and a little pin nailer. After I finished attaching the pole wrap, I went ahead and did a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper over the fluted surfaces and then flipped it over and did a final sanding with 220 on the entire top. After blowing everything off, it was time to work on the finish on this piece. I wanted to keep a really light looking stain on this piece and you might be wondering why I couldn't just add a clear coat to it, but that actually does darken it up a bit and so I decided to add a really diluted whitewash first. I used an old paintbrush and applied this really liberally to the entire surface and then wiped it off with paper towels. Since this is a water-based finish, you want to work really quickly because if any of it starts to dry before you wipe it off, you end up with a streaky finish that does not look good. And even as quickly as I was working, I still had a couple of spots that ended up slightly streaky and so I sanded those down and redid it. Once the top dried, we flipped the piece over so I could apply the whitewash to the fluting. For this part, I figured out it actually worked better to apply with a rag instead of a brush, and so that's what I did. After the whitewash had fully dried, we flipped the piece back over and I sprayed two solid coats of Minwax's polyacrylic in an ultra flat finish. Once this piece was dry, it was ready for staging and photos. I texted my friend Justine to see if I could stage this at her house and look how perfect it looks in her living room. I just love the way this piece turned out and as soon as I had listed it on Facebook Marketplace, I had so many messages about it. And even after it had already sold, I had a lot of people asking, what store did you buy this at? I love it. And to me, that just felt like the biggest compliment because it really doesn't look like a DIY project.
Well, I love the way this coffee table turned out and I cannot believe you took a $20 Facebook Marketplace coffee table and turned it into something that could be in some high-end magazine or something. It looks beautiful. Yeah, I keep thinking I would totally see this in like a CB2 magazine or West Elm or something like that. Well, it's amazing what you can do with a little bit of money and a whole lot of creativity. That's what Andrea specializes in. And I also love the reno board wall. I think it looks fantastic in the studio. So we had a blast on this project. We hope you enjoyed coming along for the ride and we have some really exciting projects coming up. I know we say that often, but <laughs> We're getting more and more excited about some of the projects that we have it's on the calendar true. coming up. So stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next video. I think you got the loudest chair at the kitchen table. I was Let's actually try gonna, and sit super still. I was actually going to give you the one that didn't squeak at all. Let's do it. Yeah. <gasps> the lizard's on the curtains. There's a lizard. Should I capture it on my phone? Yes, capture it on your phone. Right now. Deep within the living room forest, a lizard on the curtain. Why in the world is it on the curtain? We don't know. All right, so let me take a video from behind so the people. So they just know, you know, what it looks like back here. We have an audience today. He yeah. wanted in on the action. He wants to be on DIY. This is where we film. It's a $50 light. Whoa. Camera, we have our fancy microphone. Look at this fancy microphone we're using here. Oh. The lovely Andrea, as usual. Hello, welcome back to DIY Wife. I'm here with Andrea. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> you don't have to patronize me, okay? I know I say that line a lot, but you don't have to make fun of me. You're a creature of habit. You order the same thing at a restaurant <laughs> every time we go. That's right, yes. And you don't? That he's lizard looking, is he's still looking, staring at us. He's looking, he's looking right at us. It's very strange. Just don't poop on my curtain. This is our first time having a live audience. Yeah, for the if filming. we seem a little bit awkward today, it's because we actually have yeah, there's a live lizard, audience. Right? All right, here we go, 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 okay. here we go, here we go. Here. It's really cool, it's really unique, <laughs> and it's a furniture clip. Here, let me let me have We got this for twenty dollars on Facebook Marketplace. Look, he's down there. He's coming over. He wants to get on the screen. Check it out, the fireplace. Hey, he's earned it. Welcome to YouTube, man. Oh my, this fireplace looks bonita. Yeah, uh, we were distracted today. Well, colors are looking vibey. Colors are okay. looking vibey. Mm -hmm. Welcome to fall, folks. We're so distracted by his lizard. We Crawling could, around the wall like in front of us. <laughs> we could not do a live audience. We'd be like, hey, I love your sweater, man. Coming back. Look, he like cocks his head to the side. He like looks and he does He move. really is looking at us like he's turned to us. Like I feel like he's going to ask him. us about car insurance or something maybe. That's the wrong kind of lizard. Oh. He's turning yeah. his head back. He's looking at us. Okay, we got to go. Would you quit obsessing over this lizard? <laughs> I don't know if we should put that in there. Okay, so recording. <laughs>